What does this mean for Carmelo in the future? Well, unfortunately, I suspect it means that he may want to stay. He does need to leave. He has a no-trade clause, obviously. He gets to dictate things. As I reported last week, there was literally a five-team uh, deal on the table where Phil was on the phone, according to my sources, literally begging Carmelo Anthony to waive that no-trade clause. Carmelo Anthony would have ended up in Cleveland with Paul George. Uh, there was a multi-five-team trade that ultimately fell through because they couldn't find anybody to take Kevin Love's contract, even though Phoenix is now interested in him. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if Eric Bledsoe ended up in Cleveland, but that's a different story for another day. What's going on with Carmelo Anthony is that if he leaves, he doesn't want to be traded. He wants to be bought out, meaning he wants all of his money and then be free to go anywhere he so chooses. That's what Carmelo Anthony wants because the team he wants to go to, he wants to be fully armed. He doesn't want them to have to surrender assets in order to acquire him because he finds himself in that situation being in a, a somewhat improved situation, but not necessarily uh, the kind of ideal circumstances that he wants to find himself under. So that's basically what the situation is right now. He's owed $54 million. He wants to be bought out. Um, James Dolan and the New York Knicks are highly reluctant to do so. In order for him to be traded, he'd have to waive his no-trade clause. He's reluctant to do that unless the situation is ideal. Cleveland, the Clippers, and Boston are on his radar. That's the situation right now. So I, I would tell you that if, if knowing Carmelo Anthony, even though I completely and emphatically disagree with him, he would be inclined to stay now that Phil Jackson is going to be gone. Um, and to me, that's relatively unfortunate, even though I'm sort of hearing his relationship with Steve Mills, the interim GM and, you know, running, running the show right now, isn't that great? Uh, Steve Mills is highly respected and liked by agents and people he has, he has to do business with, but all of the players are not sold on him. Some of them may find him to be just a touch bit suspect. I don't know how much accuracy there is to that, but that's what they're saying about him, whereas others are saying he's very trustworthy and they like him. So it's, it's touch and go with that regard. But again, Melo likes his money. He loves New York, and he loves having a billionaire owner like James Dolan as his boss. So I would be inclined to say he's going to stay, but I'm hoping he changes his mind quick, fast, and in a hurry because as great of an offensive player as he is, he's never played in an NBA Finals. And to me, that needs to be a priority for him right now. Okay, how many, how many years before the Knicks become a contender for the NBA Finals? And how uh, could they do it without say. Carmelo? That, that's hard to say because here's the reality. I can argue with Will all day about his points about Phil because I mean what I say. But I, I meant what I said about Phil without completely absolving James Dolan. The fact of the matter is, is that it rots from the head on down. James Dolan has been in charge since 1998-1999. We've, we've chronicled the level of ineptitude that has raked through this franchise like a virus since that particular moment in time. He does not get to be absolved from that. And then when he issues statements like he just did, again, I need to give him a pass because he does cut the check and he does pay these guys. And at the time he hires them, we do surmise that it wasn't a bad choice. But in the end, he's connected with this lack of production that has sifted through this franchise. And as long as he's still there, it, it would be foolhardy for anybody to predict that the New York Knicks are going to be successful. But they were 54-28 no, the year before Phil Jackson arrived when Mike Woodson was their coach. We can't ignore that. No, it's not. It's easy to predict. They're going to be horrendous. They will be horrendous as long as James Dolan is in charge. This is my entire point. You're throwing a hissy fit over mid-level management. You're changing the deck chairs on the Titanic and celebrating like you did something. You know, I heard you about Steve Mills and the way he's going to be received by players, and I hear you, and that's interesting. It doesn't matter if it's him or Masai Ujiri or whoever else is rumored to come in because it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know who's running the New York Knicks? Your friend Carmelo Anthony. That's who's running. Oh, I forgot. And the mob, because that's who James Dolan listens to. He listens to public outcry, and he listens to whichever star player he wants to stay in good with. Because Carmelo won. That's what happened here. Carmelo won over Phil. Now, I said some things yesterday about why would Carmelo ever choose to stay in New York? It reflects that he doesn't have a desire to win. There are reports out today that he wants to be closer to his family, that he wants to be closer to his son, that he might want to reconcile with his wife. And I respect all those. Glad to have that information and want to extend those very valid reasons to Carmelo. But it's she still... She would be worth reconciling with, but go ahead. <laughs> but it's still 
And you can right or wrong debate, yes, good, bad, whatever. It still does prioritize something over winning. So what that means is the New York Knicks are aligning themselves with decision makers who are not putting winning at the top of their priority well, list. Just a second, Stephen A. This is okay. the hand you are put in. You are put in two hands. A superstar, and I think he's great, just like you, I think he's great, but I don't think he's a champion, and I don't know that he ever will not be a champion. A champion. I don't know that he ever will be. I don't know that Carmelo has the makeup to be a champion. You mean Champions, NBA, cha you mean NBA champion? NBA champion, yes. NBA champion, that's yes. what we talk about, Absolutely. NBA champion. Absolutely, yes, because it takes that almost unhealthy desire, obsession to pursue something like that. And here's where the New York Knicks are. You talked about it. The problem at the core of the New York Knicks has been there since 99 and remains there today. It is a man who allows public outcry I give you Stephen A. Smith, and Carmelo Anthony to run the decision-making process of a $3.6 billion franchise. I want to wish you good luck and good riddance on that prospect. You have driven a premier franchise into the gutter. It will not well, be back. It's it will not well, be back. Let me, let me, let me, re let me respond to good. a couple of things. Let me respond to a couple of things because you're wrong. Uh, first part? of all, First of all, when you talked about Carmelo Anthony was running the New York Knicks. Today. Keep in mind. Now. Keep in mind that Phil, that James Dolan extended Phil in the throes of his disrespect towards Carmelo. Porzingis and the trade talk was what really, really got things percolating more so. And James Dolan's like, this is something I can't escape from right here. But the fact of the matter is that's what happened. If it was about Carmelo, he would have decided not to re-up Phil or, or exercise that option the final two years on Phil's deal. Yeah, he could have done that's that. The mob he elected part. not to. That's the mob part. That's when the public outcry, outcry got so ridiculous because Phil did what? He listened to offers for Porzingis. It would be malpractice if he didn't listen to it.